All right, guys, we are digging into the second episode, Win or Go Home, of the Netflix docu-series Full Swing. And this one, I mean, we saw some incredible stuff with the episode one, but mm-hmm. I think the rubber's starting to really meet the road. It's starting to really take off from, yeah. from like a uh, a drama character development standpoint. And now but the live stuff's coming in. Now the live stuff is starting to tease in there, mm-hmm. especially with Brooks. By the way, guys, spoiler alert, we will say we are going to be talking about the episode in depth here. So if you haven't watched it, you've been warned. The spoiler alerts are there. So this episode, I think the the main character, the main person we saw was Brooks Kepka, mm-hmm. who no doubt has been a polarizing uh, character, uh, especially just his approach to the game and his the honest, sometimes like right. brutally honest mm-hmm. way in which he approaches the press uh, has made him a character that some people love and some people hate. And I think that Netflix, I'm sure, had honed in on that early. Like, this is one of the guys we got to follow. Right. There's no doubt in my mind. And we see this throughout. And we'll be dissecting future episodes uh, going down the line. So make sure you subscribe. We'll dig into those. There's no doubt that Netflix got lucky with the way some of these storylines mm-hmm. developed, I think that you know even Brooks going to live was not something that even Brooks right. necessarily thought was right, going right. to happen early on. Um, but we got to dive in and, and embed with him a little bit. And and again, the access was incredible from you know his house and and uh, even you know How about getting interviews place, from right? his wife Jenna. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, his house is incredible. Ridiculous in that trophy room. The trophy that was interesting. Room. The empty spots. Empty spots. Um, and and again, that all these things played yeah. into the development of the character that is Brooks, yeah. the guy who is the ultimate competitor, the guy who puts empty trophy spots to constantly remind him of what you know he needs to accomplish for him to feel accomplished. But what I found so interesting was the way, and you heard Jenna talking about it, and his friends talking about it at the dinner table, mm-hmm. the way that Brooks you know, could quickly get so down on himself from a mental standpoint. And sure, Brooks struggled with injuries. And that's another thing that big time set him back. But when his putter went cold and, you know, here's a guy who no doubt is one of the the greatest to play the game in the last decade. Yeah, totally. This guy's got four majors. He set the uh, course record at Beth Page Black when he it's won there. Yep. This guy can mm-hmm. win, but here's a guy who would doubt himself. And we we saw that and I think the relatability for us as golfers to see even at the highest levels guys who would feel like sometimes you and I think a quote that he said in there was that uh you know, when when you have it, you feel like you'll you'll never lose it. When you lose it, you feel like you'll never get it back. Mm-hmm. And it was it was cool to see that and relate to that. But the drive of Brooks, you could tell it's all motivated by winning. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah. I mean, let me ask you a question. Be, most of these guys have sports psychiatrists, right? right? I gotta think Brooks is Brooks has got that. Why don't they show any of that in this show? Because the question, I wonder, does he? Is it he, privy information? No. Does he have it? I feel like he's a tough nut to crack. But I feel like he needs help the most with his mental side of things. Let me ask this. Do you feel like he's a guy who would ask for that help? I don't know. I mean, he, he did say in this episode, there are times where Jen is talking to me and I'm just thinking about my swing. That's not healthy. Right. <laughs> it's not. But what I'm saying is the way he he comes off with a lot of like this like competitive bravado, yeah. whatever. It makes me wonder if he's the type of guy who would a reach out for that type of help from like a sports psychologist or B even listen. He just feel, you know, he, mm. to me he's, and, and we saw like he was working with his potting coach and things like that. Right. But I, I just, I, the vibe I got from, from Kepka that whole time was like it, just a very like, you know, kind of grunt and push through it and like whatever it may be. But the one thing that I I found and like, I think will set people apart. And we later on, we saw the introduction of Scotty Scheffler into the episode and Netflix did such a great job of setting this up where it would build the character. So you could see the diversity and the way that they would cut back and forth. Right. Mm -hmm. And Kepka would be out there laser focused on himself, not worried about like anybody else in the field. Um, Even, and I'll ask you this question because this has been the big takeaway from this whole episode. People have been wondering. When Kepka says later in the episode, he doesn't even remember who won the 2022 Masters. Yeah. People were calling You calling bull it. on that? I think so. I think it was a moment where he had to think about who won it, but like he didn't forget it. So yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. like even the producer, you hear the producer fire the question back. Be like, do you really not know who won? And he thinks about it. He goes, oh yeah, that looked bad. Yeah, I, you know, yeah. I know. It's Scotty. But this is what I mean. Like, to me, 
and we talked about this in episode one, the, the how the friendships that are out mm-hmm. there. I don't get that from Brooks. Yeah. Brooks is a lone wolf. Mm-hmm. He's out there because the fact that he didn't have even a know who won. Right. know who won or have supportive words for scotty there mm-hmm. you know i think a lot of the other guys out there be like hey i was really you know happy to see you know I, I was upset that i didn't make the cut but i was happy to see scotty he's a good guy he won you see that from other guys you don't see that from brooks you see brooks is like yeah number one in yeah. brooks world is like brooks is what i is yep. the takeaway that i got from mm-hmm. that but like you said this this is where we got this dichotomy like we would have these flashbacks to brooks with his wife and his wife would be packing and telling him what to wear uh, you know, what, what should I bring on the trip? And he's clearly in another world. Right. He's Doesn't like, care at all. he's staring off into space. Right. And he's giving her like one word answers. Mm-hmm. And he even admits to it. Like the one thing I give yeah. Brooks every time, this guy does not hide anything. He'll tell you. Yeah. And he'll yeah. say like, yeah, he goes, my wife's talking to me the whole time. I'm just thinking about my swing. Right. Right. <laughs> then in a brilliant editing move, Netflix cuts immediately over to Scotty Scheffler. Who's the complete opposite? Mm-hmm. He's walking through the park with his wife, and they're they're sharing a coffee. And he's and Scotty's saying, you know, when I'm not out there playing, I'm I'm not even thinking about golf. Yeah, Liz. he's he's living yeah. in the moment with his wife, whatever. And again, I I said this in our last episode breakdown. I'm not saying one's good and one's bad. I think what you're going to find is that different personalities of people watching it will attach to different characters. Oh, he's more like me, or he's, he's more, more like, like me. Yeah, exactly. You know, and I I thought that that difference, but then you had. Brooks living on this knife's edge of like his competitive nature, almost overtaking him where he had to win to almost validate himself. And then you had cut over to to Scotty Scheffler. We kept bouncing back and forth. And here's Scotty saying, listen, I do all the prep I can. After that, it's in God's hands. Very clearly religious guy. You see him even his, with his caddy talking about be like, Scotty, nothing you can do now. It's in God's hands where this goes. He's really religious too. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you had this difference of these two guys of one guy who's down on himself and the other guy who's like, Hey, I did all the prep and whatever happens happens. Um, But I tell you, even following that separate storyline of Scotty Scheffler coming out of the gate, you know, his first win on tour, his first ever yeah. win on tour. And then he goes on this tear of winning a, a bunch of times and, and races to world number one and then wins the Masters. Yeah, it was incredible. It, it was, was inc- cool to relive those moments too because like we knew about that last year. We vaguely remember it. Then the show kind of puts it all back mm-hmm. into like a, with a bow on it for you. Like, yeah. oh, I got to see Scotty's epic return in that quick episode on yeah. full swing. Yeah. So I thought that was that was awesome. The one thing about Brooks uh, that I wanted to mention before was um, – he he does kind of when the live questions start coming out these guys. I'm yeah. not going to spoil the Poulter one because that's just like I, like it's cool now knowing that the guys who went you could tell they're lying about it. Yes, you catch their lies and you see the their producer smirks. keep asking the question. Right. So now knowing like watching back like I could tell Brooks knew he was going. I could tell Poulter knew he was going, and it's just funny. It's funny yeah. to see it. I could tell where I saw that change in Brooks where you see he was going was when. He started to become a little bit more defeated in his what he kept vocalizing was his inability to keep keep up with these other guys. Yeah, right. And that's what he even said with Scotty. He's like, "Look, this guy doesn't even have his best stuff, and he's firing mm-hmm. 68, 67s. I sixty threes. Yeah, yeah he's like, so I can't keep up with these guys. And when I think that's where I saw like the shift in Brooks, where it, it it's almost like that's why I say win or go home. Mm-hmm. If for for Brooks, anything short of a win is a loss. Yeah. And you picked up on that. Mm-hmm. And I think that's where he was starting to say, like, I and he you, he vocalized to his embarrassment. There was a spot where he he got cut from that Masters and he said that was the first time I was embarrassed on a golf yeah. course. And here's a guy, like I said, that competitive mm-hmm. nature is so deep, he can so can't handle not winning that it almost felt like there was a shift. He's like, if I'm not going to be winning on the tour, I'm not going to be on the tour. Exactly. And I'm going to leave and, and and go take the paycheck and go right. go over to live. Right. So I think that, again, we saw that big difference in the two. I said this before in our breakdown of episode one. I hope that they do this and they continue to do this because it reminds me of like the old NFL uh, films and we got to see more of it. The access was absolutely unprecedented that Netflix had. They were there uh, you know, on the grounds at Augusta with the players, with the players, yeah, families, incredible, right? um, absolutely incredible. Um, and then getting that backstory, even getting the backstory with, with Jenna and t- her talking about how she had slid into Brooks's DMS. Right. And yep. that's how they, they, they mm-hmm. kind of got together. Um, it was all really cool stuff. And there's, and there's more good to come in the future episodes. I'll tell you what the, uh, 
the episode with, with Joel Damon and his caddy and that lifelong friendship and what they've been through is yeah. like, it's a heart wrencher. Be prepared it is a heart wrencher. That, you know? And uh, there was another good line. I forget which episode it was, three or four, but Morikawa even talking about not going to an event because he didn't want to fly private. So being conscious about his money. Yeah. Did you get that one? Did you see I didn't that? get to that point yet. Interesting. They asked him point blank, like, yeah, episode four, like, how come you're not going out on the travelers? He goes, because, you know, I was, you got, I wasn't going, I was going with a group of people, but they were, they bailed, so I didn't want to go private. You know, it's crazy. It's well, good. that was one thing that Netflix also did a really good job of is explaining it deeper for us who who watch it and haven't experienced everything with the PGA Tour, and for people who don't know golf, they explain right. like what cut lines were, they explain like a par was, yep. a birdie was. But what I liked is they showed that you don't get this in other sports where you can go out there, play for two days, spend the money for the the flight, the Airbnb, getting your coaches and your teams mm. there. We're talking about guys laying out tens of thousands of dollars to participate in an event. They miss the cut. They go home with zero. Yeah, it stinks. Zero dollars. It stinks. Um, yep. So, and I, and I, you'll see that more when we get to the Joel Damon uh, episode, which we'll break down here as well. But, um, I think that this episode kind of started that idea of setting apart. Like, yes, there are a lot of, we saw it in episode one, friend, frenemies, friends. There's mm. a lot of friends on the PGA tour. You'll see it more in future episodes. These guys in the clubhouse sitting down and, and eating together. But there's also some, there's some differences out there. Yeah, and we, sure and, and I think they picked two perfect guys to highlight it in Kepka and Scheffler and the the difference of the way those two approach the game, and the mm-hmm. difference of what the way they think about a win, yeah. and what what they determine to be successes on the PGA Tour. Uh, my vibe that I got from Scotty is that Scotty would not consider himself unsuccessful if he wasn't world number one and winning. Same, Brooks yeah. does right for Brooks. Mm-hmm. There's nothing, nothing less than mm-hmm. one, and I think there's something to be said for that competitive nature. But at the same token. If it overall consumes you, it and here's also, a guy, like I said, who couldn't even listen to what his wife was saying. Right. He was so consumed by it. But there's there's a relatability there too that even all of us, you have a bad round of golf and you're going out to dinner with your wife later. You know, admit it. You're everybody's a little guilty of, of thinking like ah, like I think of that that putt you missed right. or whatever. Right. But imagine it's your career mm-hmm. and it and it, it just consumes him. And it's funny too, watching it in the setting that he's watching it in, where many of us would trade our financial lives mm-hmm. for what he's got in that incredible home. Yeah. And imagine being that in that place with all the things that he has. Yeah. You know, the 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 beautiful wife, the the boats, yeah. the 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 house dog, the, the house, water, the pool. and then th- and then hanging your head. Right. Can that you imagine? Sucks. That's a different, to me, that's a different type of personality. Yep. But anyway, like we keep saying, guys, we want to hear what your take is on it. We do read the comments. So comment below. What was your thoughts on episode two? What's your thoughts on the, on the series as a whole? We will continue to break these down. We're going to dive into episode three and beyond. So make sure you subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.